Imagine a place where people used two simple but utterly radical ideas to relieve uh, two of the heaviest pressures on the environment. And the result was an extraordinary display of blue skies and clean water. And just look at this buzzing city and it really looks like the sort of place with a very high carbon emission rate. But Hong Kong's rate is just 25% of the rate of the US. Our rate is also far less than those of European cities. How come? Now the answer is an amazing true story with some mind-blowing statistics which we'll get to very soon. And the info comes from a talk given by Hong Kong's environment chief, Dr Samuel Choi, last week at a forum organised by Friday Culture, the Hong Kong Coalition and Ta Gung Wenwei Media. Now our report focuses on two of the biggest things that every city needs. One is transport, so people can get to and from their workplaces or schools. The other is running water, one of the hallmarks of modern life. Now both are major utilities, you have to have them, right? No choice. But the key is that in both cases, Hong Kong used simple, radical ideas to do things very differently. In the late 1950s in Hong Kong, Chinese and British engineers working together inserted an extraordinary new clause into the official building's handbook. It said that every house or workplace or apartment must have two separate water systems. One would deliver fresh water clean enough to drink, the other would deliver seawater to use for flushing. Why? Because clean fresh water is arguably the most important single natural resource in the world. It makes no sense to flush tens of thousands of tons of it away in toilets every day. So it's seawater for toilets, fresh water for drinking and bathing. At the time there were two big objections. The first one said that all the salt would corrode the pipes and the toilets themselves. The second was that, well, no one else in the world was doing this, so it must be a bad idea. Well, let's deal with that first complaint first. Hong Kong's been using the dual system for more than 60 years now, with 80% of buildings having twin water systems. And there's been no problem with salt water corrosion. 60 years is long enough for a trial period to see if something works, Dr Choi says. Clearly, it does work. Second, if you're the only community in the world doing something, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing something stupid or bad. You may be doing something rather clever and good. And that turns out to be the case. Hong Kong is the only city in the world which uses seawater for flushing. Uh, seawater is also used in this city for construction and industrial applications too. And not many people know this, but the cooling system at Hong Kong International Airport also uses seawater. With use of seawater and reclaimed water, this city uses just 50% of the water level of other cities, Dr Choi says. Let's look at the second challenge, transport. For more than a century, cars, buses and trucks have been one of the biggest pollutants in cities around the world. Now Hong Kong's radical idea was this. Why not stick a really heavy tax on cars and then use the money to create literally the best public transport system in the world? Everybody will use the, the public system. And that's exactly what we did. Hong Kong's clean, bright, efficient public transport system has won Best in the World awards for many, many years. And it's also literally the most popular public transport system in the world, with surveys showing that more than 80% of residents, and some surveys say uh, the figure is more than 90%, of residents use it every day. No other city comes close. Uh, let's compare. A report published in December 2023 revealed that the average person in England made 862 trips a year, of which just 8% use public transport. A 2024 survey of commuter data in America showed that just 3.1% of Americans use public transportation to get to work. Most US citizens drive to work alone in their cars. That's an insane system and terrible pressure on the environment. Now in Hong Kong we have huge taxes on cars, around 100% of their value. Now you'd think that would make the public angry, but it doesn't because it's so easy to get around. In the rush hour you wait for a train for 90 seconds, uh, at the most, more usually it's 10 or 20 seconds. Dr Choi is Director of Environmental Protection and his department recently commissioned filmmakers to capture some of the beauty of Hong Kong. I have to say they did a great job. But wait, I hear some of you say, isn't Hong Kong like lagging behind its neighbour Shenzhen in terms of electric vehicles? 
Well, yeah, it was, but it's catching up fast. Hong Kong is very hilly, so the community did some experiments with electric buses and discovered that they couldn't get up them without draining their batteries. But we discovered that if we switched to electricity as a fuel source for cars and taxis and hydrogen engines for big vehicles like buses and trucks and coaches, we could get rid of fossil fuels in Hong Kong too. Now at the moment the government is leading the way with three out of four new uh, official vehicles using clean energy. But you read in the newspapers that the general public is slow to make the change with very few cars being electric. Yet maybe that's not the real story because the data shows that about 10 to 15 percent of vehicles are clean energy vehicles. But when we look at the data purchase, we find that two thirds of vehicles being purchased are clean energy vehicles. At the same Friday forum, Hong Kong's leader John Lee said that the city was on track to have much larger numbers of clean energy vehicles and chargers in the next few years. The number of electric vehicles in Hong Kong has increased from about 14,000 in five years ago to over 100,000 now. We target to increase the number of public and private parking spaces with charging infrastructure in Hong Kong to about 200,000 by mid-2027. There's a lot of innovation in the pipeline in Hong Kong and in mainland China and we'll be keeping you in touch with it. So press like and subscribe to stay in the loop. Peace. <laughs>